the next example, we have a chemical element which has a half-life of 1,590 years. And a half-life, which you probably know from chemistry, means that if we start with a given amount, in this case 100 milligrams, every 1,590 years, half of it goes away. So we're left with 50 milligrams after that amount of time. If another 1,590 years, half of that is left. And so our quantity is decreasing, but it's going down by a smaller amount all the time. And this again matches our model of exponential growth and decay, specifically decay because our quantity is decreasing and therefore our derivative is negative, so k needs to be negative. As we get more m, that's going to cause our rate to approach zero from the negative side, which is going to mean a lesser and lesser loss in amount every 1,590 years. So a half-life situation matches our model of exponential decay, and we know that the solution to this is as so. Okay, m naught is our starting amount. Let's get the specific equation. That's 100 milligrams. And we could then use one of these points to calculate k. So we'd have 50 milligrams after 1,590 years. This is t times k. Let's solve for k. Divide both sides by 100. We're being asked again, remember, to find a formula between the mass of the element left after t years. So we're on our way to figuring that out. ln both sides. That brings the exponent down. And ln of e is 1, divide by 1590. So here's our constant, which I can then substitute back into my equation right there. So m of t is 100 e. Let's write our t, and then let's write our k. Now we can take our t over 5090 as the coefficient of ln and bring it up. as an exponent on the point 5. And then E and LN knock each other out. And here comes our final equation, which should bring you to the form of an equation which you're familiar with from pre-calculus 12. So let's look at one last example. Um, that's kind of related to the exponential growth and decay idea. This is called Newton's Law of Cooling, the rate at which an item cools. Newton's Law of Cooling states that the rate of cooling of an object is proportional to the difference between the object's temperature and the surrounding temperature. So translating that idea into an equation, we get this differential equation. Remember, the equation needs to reflect, reflect the reality that we know. So if we have a cup of coffee that's hot, we know that when the temperature of the coffee is far away from the temperature of the surrounding medium, room temperature, that that cup of coffee cools off very fast. The rate of cooling is, is high. But after it cools off for a while, the change in temperature is smaller and smaller the closer that the coffee temperature gets to the room temperature. That's the reality reflected in this differential equation. All right, so we want to solve this equation. This is not specifically our exponential model of growth and decay differential equation. It's similar, perhaps it solves similarly, 
let's see what happens. So we need to separate our variables. Big T is the temperature. Little t is the time. And just to be clear here, big T naught is a constant. It's the room temperature. So let's integrate both sides. We're solving by separation. This is going to be ln absolute value t minus t naught equals kt plus c. Some of you might wonder, do we need the absolute value if the temperature of the object is higher than the temperature of the room? No, not in a cooling situation, but let's work with it anyway. To isolate for T, I can raise both sides to a base of E. And that's going to make this absolute value of T minus T naught equals, break my right side up like so. So I'm going to replace the absolute value bars with plus minus. I'm going to transfer the plus minus to the other side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace e to the c, which is a constant, and the plus and minus, all with one grand constant, c naught. And if I want to isolate my capital T, I'll move my t naught to the other side. So there is the general solution to my differential equation. To find a specific solution, we need a specific point. All right, let's define S of 0 to be our starting temperature. So if I plug T equals 0 into my equation, T of 0 will become S naught which will equal C naught plus T naught, which will make C naught S naught minus T naught. And this quantity could be plugged in specifically for our arbitrary constant. And so our formula for cooling is as follows. where this value is the difference between the starting temperature of the item and the room temperature. T naught is the room temperature. All right, let's now apply this to our situation above. Suppose that the object takes 40 minutes to cool from 30 degrees to 24 degrees. In other words, my starting temperature is telling me is 30 degrees. After 40 minutes, the temperature was 24 degrees and the room temperature which is T naught is 20 degrees. So this will be the difference between the starting temperature and the ending temperature which will be 10 E to the KT plus 20. And now to find K, we have to use the other piece of information that we're given, this side condition. So 24 equals 10 E to the 40 K plus 20. And I can solve my equation. Minus 20 is 4 divided by 10. Ln both sides. So K is ln.4 over 40. And so substituting that back into my equation, I'm going to get my specific formula for this situation to be as follows. or I can bring the T over 40 up. And now if I wanted to make predictions about the temperature 
after any number of minutes, I could simply plug in little t to calculate big T.